Luke and Lewis on 101.9 The Fox. Come on! Luke and Lewis on The Fox. Welcome to the show, Luke. I was just listening to the ad that played before our show, mm. talking about the heavenly block removals. Yes. Do you reckon anyone's ever said, when they're watching the blog, oh, that looks like heaven? <laughs> Do you reckon anyone's ever said that ever? Uh, no. No? No. Well... They're talking it up. Maybe it'll happen next episode. Perhaps. I don't watch the show. <laughs> no, me I've either. never even, like, you know how you gave that hypothetical and yeah. you're like, do you reckon anyone's ever watched the block? Uh, boom. Right there. I can't even relate. I've never watched the block. Is that one? It's got a I'm not a blockaholic. Yeah, that's Scotty uh, Cam's one, isn't well, it? Well, people yeah. say it's probably heaven all the time then if he's on it. Yeah, great. We've got a great show coming up for you. <laughs> don't we, mate? We do. Are you going to contribute anything? I'm talking <laughs> about the block. <laughs> I'm talking about heaven. I'm talking about Scotty Cam, and you've come here with nothing. Yeah, I mean, I'm an atheist who doesn't watch who doesn't watch free to air TV. So. All right. Well, after this, we're going to be talking about the fourth dimension. It's looking Lewis on the box. Lewis, uh, during the week, we I guess we were talking all week a lot that we we wanted to find out what the fourth dimension was. Yeah. We had this discussion earlier in the week because uh, an, an email came through our um, inboxes inviting us to the movie premiere of the new film, The Meg. Jeez, we get invited to so many movie premieres nowadays. As, well, I mean, as soon as we got this job, we just I thought they were special. They're not. No. I really thought they were special. I got one invite and I was like, oh well, man, a movie premiere. Now we've had like six Well, since. that's the thing. I, I haven't been replying to a lot of them, but this one really caught my interest because it said 4D screening and i haven't seen a 4d film since shrek 4d <laughs> at movie world when i was 10 mm. and i and you had to go to movie world for that exactly and you know that's in queensland it's a long way to go just to have donkey to spit in your face mm. so i was like if i can get that same experience here boom and also that was like what was 12 donkey years in ago the meg? no donkey was not in the meg why'd you go huh <laughs> I wanted the same experience, but from a 25 meter shark. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, I thought the Meg was like Sharky. the breakout film of Meg from Family Guy, but. No, it's not. It's about a shark. I actually made that joke to James, our producer, before the show, yeah. and he actually said, Can you please not say that on air? <laughs> I didn't but that. you weren't in, in the room for that, and now it's been bought hey, out. You're on welcome, air. listeners. So, um, uh, sorry, everyone. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, in hindsight, great call, James. It wasn't very funny. <laughs> But yeah, so we wanted to go along to this movie premiere together, but you couldn't go. Mm. So I took it upon myself. I still went. I went with another friend of mine. I wanted to find out what the fourth dimension was because yeah. I also wanted to see if the technology had improved because it had been 12 years since I last went to Shrek 4D. Mm. So I was like, man, surely this technology has improved in a decade. Although that was at a theme park. So maybe it could be just on park because they'd have extra facilities at the theme That's park. That's true. There was a high budget there. Shrek was, uh, I mean, still is a great film mm. and uh, high budget. But was Shrek 4D a great film? <laughs> I honestly don't remember much of it. But what do you think the fourth dimension was? Because you didn't come. Well, fourth is like touch and feeling, isn't it? So if it's like a, a water movie, there'd be like water. Close. And uh, maybe the staff at the movie cinema would run around biting everyone because <laughs> it's a shark movie. <laughs> Although I don't know about the OH&S implications. You know what? You're not far off. Yeah. The fourth dimension. Like, it sounds so cool when you're like, wow, I wonder what that is. Yeah. The fourth dimension is just a slightly uncomfortable chair that rocks back and forth. And you're right, sprays water in the face. Really? That's what 4D is. So you leave the cinema wet? Yeah. That's nuts. Like, it was spraying my face. But how wet? Like, drenched? Nah. Like, uh, it looked kind of like I was a little bit sweaty afterwards. Yeah. But I was just sweaty from that shark like water. Like, you watched Iron Man or something. Yeah. Really. If you don't know, this film, The Meg, it's about, like, the Megalodon shark, which yeah. is, like, this huge shark. It's just Jason Statham fighting a shark for two hours, right? Would right. recommend. I mean, if you're into Jason Statham fighting sharks, then, <laughs> man... This is the film for you. I have to go. It's the first one he's ever done where he's fought a shark. So I don't know why he had a weird obsession with it. But um, yeah, it was unreal. And mm. I think you missed out. And during the week, I do want to give you some sort of experience where you can see what 4D is. Would do you, you reckon you can recreate it? Well, as, I mean, as we, well as we can't could? afford to do it again. Oh, yeah. So like, I'm not going to actually take it Why don't off. we just, we'll just watch the trailer on yeah, my right. laptop and then you can just simulate the, all of the days. <laughs> <laughs> The dimensions. Yeah, All of great. the dimensions in I, the film. Mate, I, I, I'll mate, do both. Is... <laughs> Nominated, mate. Nominated, mate. Nominated, mate, for a gift, Al Hay. Yeah! 
That's right. We're playing Nominator Mate for a gift they'll hate. Uh, the segment where we give away uh, a prize to your mate that they will hate. Yeah. <laughs> it's the uh, it's 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 rude. Yeah. It's it's I would say it's one of the most uh, impolite things you can do to a friend is call up a radio station to make them receive a real stinker of a gift on their doorstep. Yes. And people are always like shocked that we do actually send out the gift. Oh, of yeah. course we do. Of course. And then we often get messages about five to seven days later, <laughs> or however the, much the standard post is, and uh, their friends not even knowing our show with just a message of. I think that's what was the, the last one bit. we sent. The last uh, one was an AFL Grand Final footy seat, uh, yeah. a padded footy seat, branded by Chemist Warehouse. Yeah, and the guy got it, and it was just like, I don't know your radio show, and I don't know why you sent this to me, but I am also not friends with my mate anymore. <laughs> So it's a great way to lose friends. Yep. What have you got for us today? Today, mate, I have uh, Series 1, the DVD <laughs> package of uh, Flavor Flav, the rapper's <laughs> reality dating show, kind of like The Bachelor, called Flavor of Love. Uh, it is four discs. Hang on. Can you remind me who Flavor Flav is? Like, did, what does he have a song? Like, what's... Uh, he was uh, Flavor Flav from the rap group Public Enemy. He's the guy who wears a top hat and a giant clock around his I do neck. know the clock guy. Yeah, from like He the... has like a clock necklace. Yeah, and he's still wearing it. So How he's old probably is got he now? massive neck problems. I don't know. He'd be pretty old. But too but old to be wearing a clock necklace. Too old to be looking for a wife on reality TV as well. Yes. Uh, so this is uh, basically uh, the worst version of Bachelor that you could ever conceive of. But um, it's got uh, many, many different episodes, like episode seven. Hang on. So is this a Flames show where tripping? he's the host and... <clears throat> Yeah, and he's the, the host and, and the bachelor. He's the host and the bachelor. So it's a dating show that he hosts and is about him. Yeah, so, so it's like he's Osha Gunsberg and the Honey Badger yeah. at the same time. So I don't know if he's done that because they <laughs> didn't have a... the budget or because he just wanted like all the power. No, it's <laughs> like all right, girls. Today we're playing a game called Kissing Me. Ready? <laughs> Go. <laughs> um, so we've got some great, great episodes here, uh, like episode ten, Viva La Flav. Yeah, great. <laughs> um, but what's what's really important about here is you just even... know there's a, like a segment on the show where he does like he does like a creepy <laughs> he does like a creepy game like about flavor. Yeah, and he's well, just like gets you know that would be episode you just know, episode man. four. He li- uh, he sounds like he likes a pun. What happens in flavor stays in flavor. Yeah. <laughs> that's that'd be there. Uh, <laughs> that's a real episode title. So if uh, your mate yeah, would that's hate not this, even true gift, because it's like what happens in flavor stays in flavor, but also goes on the four disc DVD. <laughs> that's true. So he's breaking his own rules there. But hey, he's the host and a contestant, so I'm, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go as far as saying this is by far the worst gift we've ever given away. And one time mm. we gave away a Happy Meal toy from the Emoji Movie. Yeah, and, and that was real worse. bottom of the barrel radio prize stuff. So if you have a mate that you'd like to nominate to receive this awful gift, give us a call on thirteen ten sixty. Tell us why your friend would hate it, and uh, if we think they'll hate it the most, we'll send them this absolute garbage. Ideally, we want someone who, A, doesn't even know who Flavor Flav is, which mm. probably isn't hard to find, Yeah. or B, we want someone who uh, is like or hates Flavor Flav for some reason, mm-hmm. or is not a rap fan. Yeah, so give us a call, 131060, nominate a mate for a gift they'll hate. Nominate a mate! Nominate a mate! Nominate a mate for a gift they'll hate! Yeah! That's right, Luke. We're playing Nominate a Mate for a Gift They'll Hate, uh, a game where we give away an awful gift, not to you, to your mate. Yes, yeah. people call up uh, if they have a friend that they think would hate a particular gift. Today we are giving away one of the real ultimate stinkers we've ever done. It's, uh, what's mm. it called? The Flavor Flav's reality TV show, Flavor of Love, yes. Series 1. The uh, on, on the back of the DVD, it just says in all capitals, Flavor Flav. With uh, six exclamation marks. Yeah. So that's, uh, that'll give you an idea of, of how uh, intelligent this is. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, I would say it's a dating show with the rapper Flavor Flav yeah. where he is the host and star of the show. Like, So the girls are on there dating him, yeah. but he also hosts the, the show himself. Yeah. Which makes me kind of think that maybe he just invited 20 girls over to his house and just filmed him messing with them and then sold it to a TV network, pretended it was a game show. I mean, yeah. <laughs> And uh, what what makes this particularly bad is uh, this uh, the series has no point. Uh, it says here 
that uh, on on t- in 2008, it was announced that Flavor of Love Season 3 would be the final Flavor of Love. After three seasons, Flavor Flav chose not to marry or date any of the winners from any of the three seasons. <laughs> Instead, it was revealed he would marry Liz, the mother of his seventh child, who never <laughs> appeared on the show. So, not only is this a bad show, it's, a way to it's spoil also it. pointless. And Nothing just, happens. Yeah, yeah. He's you like, hey guys, I know it. we've done three seasons of this, but uh, I've, I've, I'm actually a girlfriend the whole time. I think it's ambitious to, um, to, to, to like just really have, I think it's ambitious to do a dating show about yourself. Um, jo- uh, is it Geordie? Geordie, Geordie. welcome yeah. to the show. Geordie. Why would your mate hate this gift? I actually just think it'll be so funny just to give her this because she's single and she has been for so long. Mm. Do you reckon so, she would like to date Flavor Flav? Not at all. Yeah, no. great. Do you think she'd be jealous <laughs> of Flavor Flav finding love, turning down 20 girls to go with his ex-missus? <laughs> I don't really know. Mm. So, well, I'm not really sure. Do you reckon she'd even know who Flavor Flav is? Because I didn't before we started no, talking I, about I, this. I actually haven't. I don't even know who he is. So right. I don't know. Do you think that she would know who we are? No, actually. Well, this is perfect. perfect. This is really good. I'm I would hate this. to receive It'd be a very that. confusing and offensive gift. Thanks, Jordy. Yeah. We've got one more caller. We will consider it. Liz, welcome to the show. Uh, why would your mate hate this gift? Um, I was just calling. He'd actually love it. It's my ex-husband. Right. <laughs> you like want to send your ex-husband a gift from yeah. two strangers on the radio? Yeah, well, I figured Father's Day is coming and um, <laughs> <laughs> what better gift? Right, that's true. Well, I think uh, you've misunderstood the rules of the game. This is actually only for gifts that they will hate and also for mates, not ex-husbands. But we'll let you know when we're playing uh, nominate an ex-husband for a gift. Yeah, but hang on. How come, Liz, how come he would actually like this? He loves Flavor Flavor and Public Enemy. Right, okay. Well, I I honestly was not expecting that. You can pick it up at JB Hi-Five, I'm sure, for two bucks. It'll be on sale. Geordie, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I think... We, did we say, where did you get it from? Uh, <laughs> Why do you have it? <laughs> uh, they, they were giving... It was in a box at the radio station. <laughs> there were sample products. There was five of these. Uh, I think the other four ended up in the bin because no one was taking them home <laughs> for free. And I thought, oh, this sucks. I'll give it away to a listener's unlucky friend. All oh, right. So does Geordie have it? Yes, I think so. Geordie, <laughs> yeah, well done. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, I would say, yeah, your, your friend's going to hate it. Look, I was going to apologize. Like, I don't usually apologize. This one is really bad. This one is bad. Could you could you just, before they receive the DVD, just text an advance apology from Luke and Lewis? Yes. And if they ask who yeah, Luke no and way. Lewis are, don't explain it. Right. Because <laughs> that right, amuses I'll, me. I'll just pretend that it wasn't meant for everything. Hey, oh, thanks very much for playing, Geordie. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was nominated, mate, for a gift they'll hate. We'll be playing it again soon as soon as I find some rubbish that people want to give away. <laughs> it's Luke and Lewis on the Fox. Uh, we're looking for people who have re- more regular baths and showers. The reason why is I got in an argument last night. I would say not an argument, in a heated discussion uh, at a bar last night. Argument? Yes. <laughs> no one has heated debates at bars. Yeah, okay. Uh, where they were like, oh, yeah, I'll like probably have a bath maybe three to four times a week. And I was what? like, well, that's crazy. No one has that time. I'm like, how do you have that kind of time on your hands? See, Showers I, are so efficient. That's why we, most people shower. Well, we started off with baths first, and then we invented showers, yeah. and the world was never the same. We were like, oh, running water. Yeah. Boom. And you stand under it, and it turns off with now, a tap. You don't have to drain it. I love a bath, but three times a week? How often do you bath? I'd say once every two months. It's really? a tree. Is do that a fit? lot? No, I don't. But I don't <laughs> fit in my own bed, so I'm used to it. Yeah, right. Do you actually have a bath? Yeah, it's nice. I couldn't imagine you. You relax. I mean, I'm not not that I am trying <laughs> I to picture it. Have a, just... <laughs> I have a read. You can you can laugh at which one of your parts float. It's great. <laughs> yeah. That's another reason why I'm put off ba- uh, baths is don't like the floaties. I don't like floaties. <laughs> mm. It just it's eerie as it floats in the water. <laughs> well, geez, you're lucky you're not a woman then because there's twice the amount. <laughs> anyway, all right, come on. <laughs> now, I thought this was ridiculous. I was like, I'm a shower man, and I'm going to confess now, I haven't had a bath since I was in grade two. What? Yeah. We have, a, we got a new bath in our house in grade three. Mm. When I was in grade three, and still haven't had a bath it. in it. Never used it. Does it have spa jets? 
Uh, no. Mm. No, it's, it's not a fancy bath. It's... Mike? Radio Mike? Button pusher? Have I've you had a bath? I've never had a bath in my life. Like, I've been in a spa. Uh, your parents never bathe you when you're an infant? Well, when I was an infant, I assume I have, but I've never had a bath as, like... As never a had a willing never bath. Never had a bath? No. Do you want to have a bath? No, because isn't it just sort of like you sit there and it's just your own dirty water that you're Classic yes. bath in. virgin talk here. Yeah. <laughs> never had a bath. No the, perspective in life. But I feel like I can picture, I haven't had a bath for ages, but I can picture what it is. Yeah, it's nice and relaxing. It's like, it's the same thing as when you're in bed. You're surrounded by your own dirty covers, except it's water. Yuck. I want to talk to you. Okay, we've got Sir, uh, Simone up. Simone, do you Hi. bathe more than you shower? It's probably 50-50. Who has that kind of time? How, uh, how long does lot. it take you to do the whole bath process? Like an hour? Yeah, yeah, easy. Shower takes 10 minutes. I know, but like, like from, the from... Bath, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's a lazy way to, you can drink and read a book and... Do you do drink the water, Simone? <laughs> you drink the water, you drink the alcohol. No, she has a drink oh, while okay. she has a bath, okay. like a relaxing... False alarm, everyone. But That's I would insane. argue that you could also you like, could have also a drink, drink in the, the shower. Water, Simone. Maybe I'm going to give that a go next time I have a bath. I've got about a month and a half left till my next yeah. one. <laughs> right, so you actually prefer a bath over a shower? I wouldn't say prefer, like obviously, but I enjoy it and, and it's relaxing downtime. It's me time. I zone out. Mm, I that's just, true. I that's can't I like believe baths. this. Well, let's see if we can well, find someone. Well, I want to find someone. Do you reckon that's out there? I don't think it exists, but yeah. do you reckon anyone baths every day like they don't shower? Well, uh, Elisa, uh, do you prefer baths to showers? I do, yes. And mm. how often are you bathing instead of showering? Um, it would be about fifty fifty. I'd take about three to four baths per week. That's insane. I don't who are these people? Why do you have so much time on your hands? I actually don't. I work full time so I'm pretty busy all the time. I think I know why you're so busy, Elisa. Yeah. You're fitting in too many baths. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's my time out. It's my time away from everyone. I turn off all my phone and everything. Is she full time um, at bed, bath and beyond? <laughs> <laughs> so you do. Well, right. thanks, thanks for calling, Alyssa. Danielle, uh, do you prefer baths to showers? She's Danielle, right she's probably just, just relaxed. Yes, really hello. Relaxing. You, you prefer baths? Yes, definitely. How many do you have a week? Uh, I have probably one to two baths a day. What? Well, well, hang on. No, 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 no. You're a fish. No, you <laughs> that's, that's not it. human behaviour. You've got gills. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I start work at 6 a.m. every morning, work 6 to 2, and I get up at like 4 in the morning to take a bath before work. <laughs> you wake up two hours. But that's what I mean. You have to literally plan your life around having baths. You yeah, you do. But it's so worth it. You have two a day, so and you literally what never shower. And do you have a bath? I have a bath morning and night. Why, do you, why does it matter, you weirdo? Because if <laughs> I was... I, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry about him, Danielle. <laughs> Danielle, Danielle I, I want you to, to clock in. I need a timesheet of your exact bar bathing <laughs> schedule. I think this is crazy. So can you please confirm this, Danielle, because I did not think this person existed. Do you have, do, have you like never had a shower? I've had a shower. But when was the last time you showered? Oh, I, I can't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's a crazy. <laughs> right. What, what do you, but if, if How do you wash your hair in the bath? You can you do that? Oh, you can just get a bowl or, you know, anything. What, so you, like, pour water over your head? This sounds like the worst. <laughs> well, yeah, or you can get, I've got, like, one of those hose things that connects to the tap. Well, here's the like thing, little... Danielle. For me, a That's bath... called a shower. Just <laughs> hop in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> Luke and Lewis on the Fox. Hmm. Why were you questioning it? Well, I've just been saying Luke and Lewis on the Fox the same way for so long that I thought I'd just add a question mark. Hmm. Next break, I'll add an exclamation. We'll you see just made better. me doubt it. It's like, yeah, we are on the Fox. Mm. Don't put doubt in the listeners' minds. James is telling us to move on from this. <laughs> nah, man, this is great content. <laughs> All right, I'd prefer to stay on this for another two to three minutes. Lewis, mm. did it need a question mark? Well, I don't think that it did need a question mark, but also I feel like it needs... Lewis, I think we should move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do you want to talk about? Lewis, I've had a situation recently where I was catching public transport from mm. uh, near South Yarra Station, I think, yep. towards the radio be where station. where the public transport is. Yes, uh, towards the radio station uh, in South Melbourne, right? Yep. And um, 
I was waiting there and I was waiting for a tram and my tram wasn't coming. And mm-hmm. there was at this point, often I think when three trams don't come in a row, you can imagine the people really start to build up at the tram stop. And then a lot you're of like, people going to get on. Yeah. Or, there's a yeah. lot of people looking at their watches going, come on, I'm late for something. I've been waiting for about 25 minutes for a tram at this point, yeah. which is supposed to come every eight minutes. Mm-hmm. And I was in a bit of a rush to get here. And I noticed, I recognized one of the other guys at the tram stop. Uh, you may also recognize him. Do you know the guy with the kind of like, uh, long hair, long curly hair who works at the hairdressers downstairs? Favorite barber on the planet. Yes. Yep, you know, know him because his hairstyle hair, is, yeah, hair. it's quite long. Yeah. Um, he's got a, he's got a quite recognizable, uh, haircut. Yep. And I was like, oh, that guy works in the, uh, barbers downstairs from the radio station. Mm. And I could see him looking at his watch and I was almost going to do a bit of like, hey mate, <laughs> Trams, eh? It kind of he thing. wouldn't recognize He wouldn't you, know mate. who I am. I you know. look so generic. I know. I don't have the hair that he does. Mm. And uh, so he, I saw him go, nah, you know what? I can't wait anymore. And he ordered an Uber. And the Uber came. And just as Uber was pulling up, I was like, oh. Going I'm, to the same place. I know he's going to where I'm going, but he doesn't know that. He doesn't mm. even know who I am. I know who he is, and I know exactly where he's going, because he yeah. kept kind of... I assumed that he was going to work, and yeah. sure enough, I came here half an hour later. He was. Yeah. Would it have been... What, what I want to know is, would it have been weird if I had been like, hey, man, I'm Luke. I work at the radio station upstairs. Yeah. I know where you're going. Mm. Can we split an Uber? Because it would have been cheaper for him. Yeah. It's, that's more efficient. Yeah. And it would have... Well, yeah, that's the benefit for him. He gets to split an Uber. See, if someone walked up to me and was like, hey, man, I know where you work. I yeah. know you're getting an Uber right now. Can I get in your car? I'd be like, go away, Ted Bundy. Yeah. I would rather be safe. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. So that's... It's creepy. I, well, I, I didn't know. do it. Well, but... there is Uber rideshare now. Can you turn a regular Uber into a rideshare? That's what I wanted to know. So on 131060, I want to get up a panel of people here... Mm. Could it, would it, I didn't end up doing it. I just, I, yeah. look, I, 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 I wimped out. I'll be yeah. honest. I was like, ah, I can't do it. It's too Can weird. you do an improvised Uber pool? I ended up catching a train and then a tram. It took mm. me 45 minutes to get here, but I knew it would have just taken 10 minutes if I had have had the guts to ask this guy. Can I right, well, Uber. we'll throw it to the people. Yeah. 13, 10, I'm looking for an even spread. I want an Uber driver. I want people who take Ubers all the time. I want a hairdresser just to get <laughs> the general demographic of hairdressers. And then opinions. why don't you call the show as well? What do you mean? Just to represent you. Yeah, okay, great. I'll, and I'll call in and yeah. then we'll get like a panel of people up. 13, 10, 60, was I in the wrong here? Could have I asked him to yeah. split the Uber? Is it creepy? Let's find out next. Give us a call. It's Luke and Lewis on the Fox. Luke and Lewis on the Fox. Ooh, that was enthusiastic. Exclamation point. Love that. Mm. Lewis, uh, I was I had an Uber conundrum yeah. recently. Um, I was waiting uh, for a tram. The tram didn't come. There was a lot of people waiting. Uh, it'd been about half an hour, and there was a few people getting very uh, anxious that they might be late for work. Yeah. And there was a guy near me who I recognised, and you also know. Uh, yeah. He works in the hairdressers downstairs. He's a barber. Yeah, same and he's building. quite recognisable because he has quite long hair and a very recognizable haircut. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I was like, oh, I know exactly where that guy's going and I'm also going to the radio station. So I wanted to know. He ended up ordering an Uber mm-hmm. uh, and as he was kind of getting in, I was wondering, would it be weird if I was like, hey man, I know who you are. Can we share an Uber? Yeah. And can I See, hop in your car? I think <laughs> the problem is, is weird. I reckon I could have done that because sometimes I go to that barber, but you've never been there. So he right. would not know who you are. No, he wouldn't. And he would be like, how do you know who I am? And I'd be like, oh, the hair. And then it'd be weird. Yeah. So yeah, we asked people to call on 131060. We wanted to get a panel of judges up. Uh, Davina, uh, w- was it weird? Not at all. I would have loved it. Like if you were to be, to be the one to ask me, I'd be like, yeah, sure. Like it's cheaper for me. Why not? Right, so if like yeah, a stranger like, came up to you and was like, I know who you are where and where you work and where you're currently going... Off no conversation, can I get in your car? You'd be like, great. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Save like, seven if bucks. If you, friendly, if you seem friendly enough and like, you know, you don't want to have that standard Uber ride where it's just like a, an awkward conversation with the driver, like, how's your day been? You Instead, know you can have it with a yeah, stranger. Yeah, exactly. Who knows where you so work. Offensive. But but would you be a little concerned that I knew, like, say, if, like it was you in that situation, that I knew where you were? Because you don't know who Luke is at all. You've never seen he, him He wouldn't know who I am, for sure. Like, I just happened to walk no, past his barber shop. Like, 
surely because you work in the same building, surely he's seen you. Oh no, he, he works in the shopping complex below. So whenever we go and get food, like you know, we'll walk down there and I'll go to like Coles or something. So I just walk past his barber shop. So he wouldn't know who I am at all. He would have no idea. <laughs> so is that does well, that change it or? No, not at all. Like I mean, he's a barber. <laughs> Great. I made a friendship with a barber, like well, in an Uber. I'm going to start doing that with anyone who's going to the city. I'm just going to say, I'm going to the same place, man. I yeah. know where you work. <laughs> Even if it's at like 9 p.m. I'm not going to work. doesn't matter. I know where it is. Um, hey, Barry, uh, you're a real estate agent. We are trying to get an even spread of society, a wide demographic. Yeah, Barry was a cosmetic consultant. Oh, great. Just in so, case that, if that changes things, guys. Yeah. Uh, Barry, what do you think? Would have you been okay with that? Yeah, I would have been, uh, been happy with it. Like, hop on in. Would have you been a bit weirded out that I knew who you were? No, no, not at all. It's well, you're a real estate agent. Right? You'd be on billboards, wouldn't you? Well, this is true. But don't, don't, don't hurt yourself. Are you okay. famous, Barry? You would have jumped in there for sure. Yeah, right. Well, see, classic real estate. Right, so everyone's saying I should have done it. I, I chickened out. I should have done it. Well, Tracy, welcome to the show. Do you think that was weird or not? <laughs> Tracy. Tracy was so weirded out. She doesn't want to talk to you. Hi. How are you going, Tracy? Good. It's all right. Take your time. <laughs> We're just on radio. Hey, hey, Tracy, don't actually. What's up? Uh, (laughs) Was I in the wrong? Look, no, no, not at all. How come? Would you like to elaborate on that or that's it? (laughs) Well, I only heard half the question. Okay, so would have you felt comfortable with me approaching, uh, like you you getting in an Uber and going like, hey, I know where you work, I know where you're going, you don't know who I am, but can we catch a lift together? I think what you should have done is rephrased it so it didn't sound bad. Yeah, either right. Way. Yeah, starting off a conversation gone... with "I know who you are and where you work." Well, I didn't do this, by the way. I just <laughs> yeah, want to say I didn't do it. But <laughs> yeah, how how do you go about that? Like, hey, I, oh, I would have had to be like, "Hey, man, uh, do you work at the barber shop in South Melbourne?" And he would have been like, "Yeah," and I would have been like, "Man, I'm mm. going right near there." But then he would have gone back with, "How do you know that?" And I would have been like, because you've got crazy hair. Hey, Tracy, why don't you just do a bit of a role play? Why don't you try and get in Luke's Uber right now? What should he have done? Well, I, I just would have got up and just said, oh, look, you know, sorry, I just noticed you were waiting for the tram as well. Why are you looking at and, me, Tracy? Yeah, and look. look I'm being him. Happened to be going in a similar direction. How do you know that? I said, you know, would you happen to be going... Hang on, are you doing both sides of the conversation? (laughs) (laughs) She's just completely ignored you. Yeah, I don't think Tracy knows what a role play is. Mate, if someone walked up to me and started having two conversations at once, I wouldn't let them in my Uber. Yeah, (laughs) it's like, hey, go on, piss off. (laughs) (laughs) Luke and Lewis on the Fox. Lewis, you've been a bit of a flaky mate lately. Mm. You've been ditching a few events, over committing... Yeah. Saying you're going to turn up to things, then not showing up. Hey, look, man, it feels you're great last to say, yeah, I'll, I'll go there. You do it all the time. Literally three times this week, mm. you've overcommitted yourself to other things. You've... When have I ever done that? Name four times I got... <laughs> this week. <laughs> <laughs> three's enough. Yeah, three's There's enough. only seven days in a week, yeah. and I think we were going to hang out three times, and you bowed each time. <laughs> We've already talked about the fact that uh, you were supposed to come to this movie thing, uh, this yeah. movie premiere with me during the week. Didn't I'm show. sorry I missed the Jason Jason Statham shark movie. Hey, and I know sorry. that was really important. It was important to us, and now you will not know what 4D feels like. Yeah. The second thing, uh, our whole radio team, I think it was like kind of your idea. Hey, we were. I'm sorry that I suggested something to make a team bonding exercise. So this is what the happened. Team, Me and Lewis kind of didn't show up talking about it. Okay. We're like, oh, you know, we should do something outside of radio with everyone who works in our show just for a bit of fun. Because often Mm. we just see each other at work. So, like, let's do something outside. That'll be good fun. And Lewis is like, yeah, great idea. Can't wait. And now, as it's the show is Luke and Lewis. Yeah. So, you'd think the two people who are going to (laughs) show up to this day is Luke and Lewis. Hey, I organized it. That's enough. You guys wouldn't have done it without me. You're welcome. Literally, the mic organized it, actually. (laughs) We both couldn't be bothered. Yeah, but I said it was a good idea. Yeah. And then an hour before, Mike calls me and goes, hey, Lewis isn't coming. Uh, And then he goes, he goes, doesn't that surprise you? And I was like, not at all. (laughs) He's bailed on me like twice this week. (laughs) I'm glad you have faith in me, Mike. You didn't show up. So we all went. eroding that. Me, Ebony, James, Mike, Mm. we all went to do an escape room without you. I was texting you guys. I was there in spirit. you weren't. I sent you a couple. I said, hey, I'm not going to make it. Yeah. No, you didn't. That's how was it? You only texted Mike. You didn't even put in the group chat, mate. You're a classic flake, mate. All right? And 
It's it's unreal, and I want to say that. Well, I think there's lots of people out there like me. I'll stand up for the flake, mate. Sometimes I mean, it feels give us nice. a call if you if you are a ditch dog, all yeah. right, and you and you want to chat Come on the represent show. the team. Sometimes it feels good to commit to something, and even better when you don't turn up. It's like the best of both worlds, Mike. Yes. Were you offended that Lewis didn't show up? Honestly, I was deeply offended. Do you I have put a diary? So much effort in. Yeah, he put in so much effort organizing that. Hey, I had to put on my tour on sale. That's my excuse. Which I probably should Which have Which you knew you ha- were going to do on Thursday. Yeah, shouldn't have committed to it in the first place, I think. So, do you have a diary? Why do you keep... What's the problem? How do we fix this? Well, the problem is I keep a diary. I put all of my events in there. But before I add a new event, I don't check the day. So... There was one day... This actually happened. This is a true story. Uh, this was another movie premiere thing, right? We got asked by the radio station <laughs> to host the Jurassic World <laughs> Fallen Kingdom movie yeah, we premiere. To host that one. That was important. And then... We got told that about a month before, two days before we go into a meeting and uh, we're like, yep, are you boys too excited? And you're like, yep, yep. Halfway through the meeting, half an hour into the meeting, <laughs> Lewis a month goes- after I committed. A month after committed, half an hour into wasting this guy's time, Lewis goes, oh, just realized I'm actually on a cruise. I'm going to be in Vanuatu. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. Uh, we were, hey, I organized that six months ago. How am I supposed mm, to remember? You're a classic flake. I hate All it. All right. Well, hey, give us a call if you're a flake, mate. I want to talk to you. <laughs> Let's bond. Or, hey, just say you're going to call and then don't. Who cares? It's Luke and Lewis on the Fox 131060. We asked you guys on 131060 if you wanted to dob in a ditcher. We want to speak to flake mates because Lewis is a pro flake mate. Yeah. I just you're a think- seasoned veteran. I would say you're... Your invite to actually showing up an event ratio is insane. You're probably hitting maybe one in ten. You're right. I get invited to a lot of stuff. I am very popular. Thank you no, very much. Not at all. I would say you get invited to about ten things a year and show up to one. Yeah, that's probably why I don't get invited very yeah. much. <laughs> yeah, this week you've ditched uh, a team morale uh, evening where we we're going to do an escape room together. Yeah, but that was more to test the team morale. Right. <laughs> and... And I would say you weren't, I would say it went fine without you. Which... Yeah, congratulations, you passed. No. <laughs> All right. A plus. Okay. Well done, team. And you also ditched me at a movie premiere. We're supposed to go together last minute. You're Again, like, oh, by the way, test. man, can't come. Mm. Um, we've got Chris on the line. Chris, you reckon you're also a, a ditch dog? Yeah, definitely, boys. <laughs> why, why do you flake on I events? Like it. Uh I probably used to think that it was cool to rock up late to parties. And, and then stuff. you just stopped going at all. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Invited. Don't keep flaking. <laughs> yeah, but it's not cool to not show up at all because then it's like it seems like you're not even getting invited after all because everyone goes, oh, like, man, Chris never keeps showing up to these events. He's probably not even invited. No, nah, Chris has a point. One time I showed up on time to a party and I really hated it. And then from then on, I was always like half an hour late. Then it became an hour late. Then it became never yeah, <laughs> and and I, that's really cool. So I'm I'm on board with that, Chris. Well done, Chris. How many like like what's the what's your worst flake to date? Is the one that stands out above the rest? Um, probably just always ditching on the boys to go go have a kick of kick of footy or something. What's your what's your go to excuse? Oh, I fell asleep. The, the most typical worst flake. Never. Wait, so you literally say, I'm asleep. They're not going to believe that, man. Who sleep <laughs> no, texts? I, I used to actually fall asleep quite often, so right. I was having that. It was, well, it was bad. <laughs> hey, thanks for giving us a call, man. You're probably one of the only flakers that actually decided to call. Everyone yeah. else thought about it and then just did it. Uh, but Ash, welcome to the show. You're dobbing in a mate? I'm dobbing in a mate. Yeah, yeah you're like me. For? She flakes on everything. So we were meant to go to a groove in the Moon Music Festival this year and yep. she bought the ticket. Like we got Christmas pre She bought like, the ticket? I haven't yeah. done that. I haven't spent no, money. She dropped hey, out. did you still owe Mike like thirty bucks by the way? Oh yeah, I did I did pay for that ticket. Take it back. I'm just as bad as you mate. <laughs> yeah. She dropped out the day before we were leaving and uh, sold her ticket. And were you just going the two of you? No, there were other people as well. Oh, um, at least she didn't ditch you like by yourself. Did she make money on the ticket though? No, she's like, I'd feel unreasonable. I'm like, you're an idiot. Yeah, was it she, in Bendigo? She should be a savvy investor. It was in Bendigo. I would yeah, also flake on that event. Yeah, true, it's in Bendigo. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't very good, no. <laughs> <laughs> what a great rap for that. The <laughs> groove in the mood. Hey, thanks for calling, Ash. Uh, Luke, I'm going to flake on this segment. I don't yeah. do it anymore. It's Luke and Lewis on the Fox. <laughs> Lewis, we're doing a segment that, uh, called Quick Bait, uh, where mm. I have clickbait news articles. Yep. And obviously, there's so much news in the world these days, it's hard to be across it all. So this no, is it's a, not. It's easy. Well, you find it easy, which is the great... Just you, across it, man. Yeah. you're. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is the point of the segment. You yeah. are 
across it. Now, the, the way this works is I have real news headlines that are around floating around the websites today. And you may have noticed that often these days, headlines aren't really headlines. They're yeah. mainly just questions. Yeah. So an example one that I found on Mumbrella earlier was how can PR adapt to a new, more concentrated media landscape? Yeah. And the idea of that is... You click on the article to find, to find out. It. That's a good question. But we another don't have question time. is like, is Mumbrella actually news? Yes. And to That's that, another good question. we'd say no. Yeah. But <laughs> what we're going to do today is I'm going to read you. You've got a minute today on the clock. We've got a timer this week. Yep. We're going to try and get through as many news right. headlines as possible. Now, the great part about this, Lewis is turning his uh, cap backwards. He's taking this very seriously. seriously. Yep. The great thing about this for listeners is you're going to get probably a whole day's worth of news in just one minute because we're not going to read the articles. Lewis is just going to answer the question that's in the headline. And you've picked all of these, have you? Um, yeah, I've got a few. Hopefully, I've got a minute's worth. I mean, it depends how quick you are. Mate, you're all the way the over there. I'm here at the it. you got to get across. All right. Are you ready? You Let's do it. Are you it. ready to do some quick bait? Yes, I am. Let's do it. Uh, start the clock, Mike. <laughs> News.com.au. Is it time for universities to die? Uh, no, universities can't die. They're buildings and schools. Impossible. Great. Uh, another one, ABC. Will Brexit happen on March 29th as scheduled? Uh, no, I don't think it will because, you know, Brexit, who wants to do that then? Yep, probably get it more February 17th. Good to see that the time is watermarked. Thanks, Mike. Oops, that was my fault. I made the timer before the show. <laughs> mm. Is this a bad segment? I'll answer that. Yes. yes. Continue. All right, news.com.au. Are the Ds about to blow their big finals chance? Uh, I don't know. Uh, is there a, can letters play footy? Uh, <laughs> this is from uh, Mumbrella. Is it time to stop keep cups? Is Mumbrella news? Again, no. I'd like to ask. <laughs> Answer the question. Is it time to stop keep cups? Uh, no. Let them continue world domination. Uh, um, Yahoo. Uh, what is the real reason the purple and the yellow wiggle split? Uh, because they're gymnasts and they often do the splits. All right. Finally, from the ABC, what is next for Julian Assange? Uh, lunch. Lunch? <laughs> Can't wait to watch Julian have his lunch. I mean, he's going to have to do it in the embassy, but mm. I'm sure he'll enjoy his meal. Yep. You know what? That's probably one of the only things he can actually do. <laughs> hey, I told you, man. I'm across it. <laughs> Thanks very much. That was quick bait. Luke and Lewis on the Fox. Lewis, our button pusher radio mic, is a sneaky boy. Would you agree? Yes or no? He's always doing stuff behind our backs. He is. And lately, it's obviously nothing's changed. And mm. uh, it, it doesn't matter. No matter how many times we interrogate him on the show, make him explain himself, Hey man, stop doing this kind of stuff. It's super weird. We always find out, right? Don't shake your head. After the break, we're going to interrogate Mike. I don't know what this is about, but it he, looks like Mike's just figured it out. So he just, probably... I think he knows. He has too much time on his hands and hands, and he knows it. It's like, dude, find a hobby. Anyway, we'll, well talk hey, about don't it tell next. me yet. I want to hear about it after this. It's Luke Lewis on the Fox. Luke, uh, our button pusher radio Mike is in trouble for doing something. Well, he's been doing something behind our backs. He often does this on the show. Like he'll just, I feel like. We only do show our show once a week these days, so it's like there's a lot of free time to kill during the week. And Mike I often has wonder, no hobbies. So no, you got, don't have enough hobbies. He's got a lot of free time. Clearly, and sometimes I wonder. I wonder what Mike gets up to. And I was contacted actually by a listener <laughs> of the show this week uh, that actually alluded to what he may be doing Monday to Friday. <laughs> Right. So a listener of the show has been requesting to Mike for, for Mike to send him an autograph <laughs> for a few months now. And what? Because people want Mike's autograph. Apparently, look, I think he wants it as a joke. <laughs> hey, no one's ever asked me for my autograph. <laughs> Well, have I, I think you like to be sent. I've signed stuff after shows. Right. But well, not... now now I have something to interrogate you about because you come up in this as well. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is great. So um, I'm having a lot of fun. I feel like you guys. Wait, know... is Mike participating in this? Mike's okay. So what's happened is this. Uh, his name's Liam. Listener of the show has gone. Uh, he's messaged Mike on Instagram, I presume, and has gone. Hey, Mike. Was it on Instagram? Do you yeah, know my Mike? Instagram, which is radio. No, no, block, block him. That. Block radio. radio. Mike on Instagram. Instagram. Block radio. Block radio. Block radio. Do not That's... follow him. Block him. But if you're gonna follow him, <laughs> request an autograph because Lewis, yeah. he will send it out to you for free. He will. Did you pay for post? Not only that, he printed out a photo of himself. <laughs> What? Give me he that. printed out a photo of himself. So, did you go to Officeworks or something? Yeah, I I remember this well actually. Mate, I went to yeah, this signature. This is not a normal signature. Did you design this? 
No, that's actually my signature. It's on my license and everything. So we're looking at a photo of it now. It's a picture of Radio Mike when we did the segment Win a Date with Radio Mike on the show. You're wearing an eye patch (laughs) and uh, a kimono, uh, and you're wearing my old footy shorts, I think. (laughs) So you look great. And uh, Liam, I'm not sure why I did this, but enjoy your pal and then your signature, and then in brackets, Radio Mike, just in case (laughs) we didn't recognize you. It says on the back really? of this exhibit A. Did you write this, Luke? Uh, I think that was James. All oh, right. Um, so what happened is, yeah, Liam's shot me a message throughout the week going, just thought you'd want to know, Mike has been sending out autographs to fans. <laughs> just one autograph. Just yeah. One. Well, he, again, mate. Well, dude, you can't do it. If you're doing it to one. This is what I've learned, man. You can't treat people who like you special. So if you do it for one person, you have to do it for everyone who wants. So what I would like to install is like, like really, are you, are you trying to say that you favor Liam over the other listeners of a show? Or no, do you... but Liam no. had been asking me for so long and it was actually starting to annoy me. So what you're saying is people need to message you every day okay, for so months. <laughs> and listeners of the show, one. if you message Radio Mike every single day for an autograph after months, he, you will wear him down. And I would say after 10 messages... You're guaranteed an autograph. He must send you an autograph. Mate, you've got to treat everyone the same. 10 you, messages. 10 well, days. otherwise you're treating listeners of our show special. Not and even I that. Don't think you that's should, fair. I think you should send everyone an autograph. And you know, you know what amuses me? He paid for postage. 30 consecutive Mike paid days. to have his own <laughs> autograph sent out. I don't think you're even... He went to office works, printed out a picture of his own head. I didn't want to make the poor went guy. Went to the post office. You go to office works to print your own face. He asked me for a photo of me. I didn't know what to do. See, I wanted him to shut up. Why so did I you sent print it to him. Not only that, Radio Radio Mike is. Uh, turns out he's a bit self conscious of his own signature. He sends Liam a message going. I hate that signature. Uh, hey mate, that's amazing because uh, Liam actually framed it. I don't know why he'd frame it, why but then you frame Mike it? said, "Hey, thoughts on my in- thoughts on." my autograph question mark well you know what Liam I wouldn't have sent it if I knew you were going to go behind my back mate it was a stitch up he just did it just so he could tell us (laughs) <laughs> I reckon he was doing it to see if you do it, and you fell for it, hook, well, line, and sinker. Well, I'm banning autographs. There'll be no more. No, I'm well, unbanning them. <laughs> autograph away. <laughs> well, I just guaranteed them. So, so if you want that's going to be a new rule of the show is if you do pester Mike for long enough for an autograph. 30 consecutive days. 30 consecutive mm. days, starting from now, uh, In Mike, a month, you're you... going to be having a big trip to the post office. And, Lewis, getting back to what you said earlier, yeah. quote Lewis at the start of this uh, segment, I've never, ever sent out an autograph to a fan. Explain this. This is a picture of <laughs> Liam's desk, which has a Radio Mike sign thing, and then also one signed by you. I can explain that. He brought it to a show. Paying Damn customer it. gets a signature for free. Uh, you're Sucked in, Mike. You paid for postage. You're the I only weirdo. <laughs> uh, I'm ending this segment. <laughs> Luke Lewis on the phone. Luke, uh, I think our show needs to get a whole lot cooler. I agree. Mm. And uh, I think a way to make our show cooler is to just, instead of doing like regular radio segments with normal sound effects, we should start theming them around like different periods of cool culture. I think you should stop talking about Warhammer miniatures every week on our show. Yeah, but I feel like if we're playing... And that's my bad. I've brought it up this week. If we're playing... the (laughs) The last three weeks were very Lewis personal interest heavy that's, theme. Which... That's true. But if we're playing the Veronicas, I mean, we can't get any deeper than that anyway. So okay. let's just talk about miniatures. Okay. So, so what, what's I have your an idea, idea yep. Luke. I have an idea for a regular segment that we could probably do twice a show for the rest of the year. Okay. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's called... Seems like a lot. It's called Radical Product Ideas and it's like themed around... <laughs> when was the last time you used the word radical in well, a sentence? This so is like it's I'm someone saying. in the street, like... Well, that was radical, man. Well, we're going to use it heaps. You yeah. hate the beach. <laughs> yeah, but here's what I'm saying. Like, surfers <laughs> a- in the 70s, they were really cool. And I feel like that we should do a, a, a segment that's, like, themed around what was cool back then, okay. specifically to surfers. Yeah, you want to so, cash in on that kind of vibe. Yeah, so here's the opener. Uh. Cowabunga, dude. It's time for some radical product ideas. Can you dig it? So, the idea, Luke. <laughs> <was it>? The idea. <laughs> The idea. I was just like hey. waiting for something good. Hey, we, our show just got cool. All yeah, right? So okay. just just vibe it, okay? It's I've got, cool. I've got three radical. Hey, Bunga, man. I can't I've got three, three ideas. <laughs> I want you to let me know whether you think <laughs> they're Crawford Ram. Wait, hang on. Are they surfing based ideas? No. Right. This so is it's a surfing just based surfing segment. Theme segment, but yeah. the actual I have, segment is you have product ideas. Yeah, none of them have anything to do with yeah, surfing. Great. In fact, if I was to theme them, they're probably the winter theme. Okay. So uh, I was thinking, Luke, you know how when it's cold, 
you wear layers, yep. right, on your torso. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, and then when you get to an office building, you can take your jumper off and you still got a t-shirt off. Yeah. But you have to, whatever you wear down below on your pants, you have to commit to to the whole day. So I was like, today, oh, it's but, cold. Like jeans. Yeah, today yeah. I thought it was cold. Maybe I'll wear sweatpants. But then I was like, mm, but I might be hot in the office. So to solve that, jacket pants. <laughs> pants and then a jacket for your pants that you can take off, but you're still wearing pants. Gnarly. Yeah, that was really Hot good. Hot dog, dude. We, we got, got a radical, radical idea. idea. Cowabunga, man. <laughs> Can't believe that you got Mike to participate in this. <laughs> of course, man. And we all have to get Sorry, cooler. I thought I had to throw in surfing lingo. I didn't realize there was pre-recorded surfing lingo. It's man, I've got it all in. covered, but I'm I'm glad you're joining in. Jacket and, pants. Um, yeah. You know, there's such thing as removable like pants, like zip-on ones. Yeah, but they look silly. Yeah, they do. Jacket <laughs> pants. I'm going to design something new. But I'm okay. glad you're getting on board with the lingo and becoming a bit of a Crawford. You know, man. I think like jacket pants. <laughs> I think jacket pants are just cargo pants. Hey, all right, next idea. Yeah. Sometimes when it's hot, this has to do with the beach, mm. you know, you want to wear a flat back cap, centurion, with the flap, but then sun goes away. Like, like what you used to wear in primary school? Yeah, but then the sun goes away and you walk around with I used to flap. wear them when I was a young grom. <laughs> That's what uh, surf lingo for a, a beginner surfer. So. Far out, man. Yeah. <laughs> so you might have your flap, but what if the sun goes away? You want to get rid of your flap, mm -hmm. take a lesson from blinds, you have like a little pool. <laughs> That's a really good idea. Hot, Hot dog, dog, dude. We, we got, got a radical, radical idea. idea. Cowabunga, man. Oh, like great. little curtain yeah. hat. And you have so a little drawstring. You pull it up and then your flap disappears. Oh, I don't know how you'd engineer that, but I'm just thinking it's That's it's a great radical. idea for a hat. If the idea is radical enough, the engineers can get on it. Final idea, Luke. Yeah. Um, so you know how there's gloves, but when you wear gloves... And you're like at the surf and someone does a real cool so These are all clothing roll. base. Yeah. And and I'm trying to mash <laughs> surf in there as well, even though I don't know why you'd be wearing gloves at the beach. But if you were wearing gloves at the beach and someone did like a, a gnarly, funky trick and you were like far out, man. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to Scooby, yeah. which is dumb. Yeah. Um, and you wanted to give him a high five. Yeah. But say if he was also <laughs> wearing gloves, the high five sound wouldn't sound very good. So what I propose, my radical idea, palmless gloves, so you can still high five. Yeah, that's a good idea. Hot dog, dude. We, we got, got a radical, radical idea. Cowabunga, man. That's the end of my ideas. What do you think of this segment, do you reckon? Do you reckon it was cool? Do you reckon you could do it again? <laughs> yeah, we'll it talk about it after the show. Oh, so it's so it's but it's not good. No, it was good, man. dude. The man shut it down. Not gnarly at all. <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang on. Did you expect me to shut it down? Did you have one for where if I was like, yes? That was the yet. No, that sound effect was for if you didn't like any of my radical product I ideas. I hated the first one. Right, well. I think I was pretty open about that. Okay. Yeah. Well, Bummer, dude. <laughs> man, shut it down. Not gnarly at all. It's Luca Lewis on the Fox, man. That brings us to the end of the show, dude. It is. Uh, and Lewis, that's a desperate attempt that he's trying to make to make the show cooler. Yeah. Um, and I, I do, I agree with you. I think our show does need to be cool and hip because well, we're on the Well, I just think we Fox. need more surfing lingo. I mean, you've come in with a billabong shirt. So yeah. You're, I don't, you're already I'm, on board. I'm bringing it fashion-wise, but my lingo probably can improve. I do have one quick business to attend to. Now, I know this isn't going to bode well for keeping the show cool and hip. I don't but have a cow, man. Huh? Don't have a cow, man. Classic surfer. I'm going to stop it. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't. I think you. What I think you've done is you've googled surfing lingo before the show. Yeah. And now you're in a world that you can't handle because you've never been to the beach. So many <laughs> phrases in my head. Have I you ever met mean. a surfer? Uh yeah. My dad's a surfer. Oh, okay. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> cool, Lewis. I have one bit of business to attend to for the end of the show. Mm -hmm. During the week, you keep sending me World of Warcraft notifications on Facebook. You keep inviting me to World of Warcraft <laughs> Facebook groups, yes, and yet you haven't even brought it up to me in person. <laughs> yes. Why? Uh, because that amuses me every time we, I see a we, group. No, I'll invite Luke. We need to draw the line here because. Yeah. I don't know why, but I didn't accept to be a part of these groups, but they've started popping up on my news feed. So now I just get like a World of Warcraft chat. I don't play the game. You do. I don't care. I want to draw the line. We're work friends, not wow friends. Okay. okay. All right. Just Warhammer then. No, I don't care. Seriously, Mike, four invitations I've got this week. Does, do you send Mike them? No, but I can start. I'll no. start sending Mike them. No, that's all right. No. So you would probably get a return autograph. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, that's the end of the show, guys. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, we are all over social media. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook, Luke and Lewis, and also YouTube if you want to watch the show. Um, and uh, make sure you block Radio Mike on Instagram. We don't want you to follow him. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, we will see you next Sunday. And uh, we've got we've got five seconds until the show ends. Three. This is two, embarrassing. How much our story. Bunga. <laughs> Luke and Lewis on 1019 The Fox.